Warsaw for the first time the, uh, to see my aunt and uncle, the Ulica Dolna, there were tanks on the intersection. Of course, we all remember, as Matthew has alluded to, the, the grinding poverty uh, in Poland because of the financially illiterate economic system that the Soviet Union imposed on us and the uh, Orwellian uh, political system that we uh, had uh, as a result of Soviet intervention uh, in our country. So when I had a debate in the House of Commons recently, I said to um, British members of Parliament, nobody has more right to be anti-Russian and hostile and suspicious to the Russians than a Polish-born British member of Parliament, somebody whose own family suffered tremendously uh, as a result of communists. But in my estimation, it is when we don't have debates in the House of Commons, when we make strategic errors. And there is in this House, as I suspect there is in the same, universal condemnation, hostility and antagonism towards Russia and her motives. Now that's fine. We can all be suspicious, we'll be, we can all be sceptical, we can all be antagonistic towards the Russians. But in a parliamentary democracy, we need a debate, as we are having now, as to what is sustainable and what is in the interests of, of our countries. I want the approach to the Russians, as a, a friend of mine refers to, an iron fist in a velvet glove. I want the iron... The Russians only understand strength. If you negotiate with the Russians from a point of weakness, they will eat you up alive. So you have to be strong with them. And a classic example of strength, negotiating through strength, is Norway and the relationship that Norway has had with Russia. I met with the Secretary General of NATO a few weeks ago in the Brussels in Parliament. And I said to him, what are you going to do as the Secretary General of NATO to lower tensions with Russia? And he referred to his time as Prime Minister of Norway. And Norway managed a very effective uh, relationship with Russia from a position of strength. A NATO country, but still cooperating with Russia in the Arctic on scientific research, fishing and other matters. They were compartmentalizing the relationship with Russia. And that is the critical word. We can disagree with them, but from a practical practical perspective, we need to maintain dialogue with them and compartmentalize the relationship. The other thing, having returned from St. Petersburg just the other day, I was just intrigued at how quickly it took on our commercial plane flying out of St. Petersburg to enter NATO airspace, and of course that is Estonian airspace. NATO has encroached ever further towards Russia, and sometimes, you know, we need to take our own prejudices aside for a moment and think from their perspective. They are genuinely fearful about the way NATO is moving ever closer towards them. And they worry because they have been invaded on a number of occasions by European countries. So I have no illusions about Russia, but I believe passionately that we must protect Poland. We must protect ourselves, but we also must protect Poland. And as I said at the outset, one solution is a massive military build-up. We can do what happened in the past, in the 60s and 70s. We can spend ever increasing amounts of taxpayers' money on building up armaments, nuclear weapons and the rest of it. And we could have the Kaliningrad Peninsula and Poland as the equivalent of the demarcation line between North and South Korea. That is one option. However, it will be a very costly one. And if I think back to those, the generation in the early 1980s, the mid-1980s, when I was a boy, and I think to myself how difficult the situation was with the Soviet Union in 1984, when Konstantin Chernyenko was the General Secretary of the Communist Party, we were still engaging with them, and in that year, Reagan invited Gromyko for the first discussions in the White House, and we invited Gorbachev for the first discussions at Chequers, 1984. So I have no illusions about them, but I, I want to have dialogue with them and I want to keep the lines of communication open. The last thing I would say is Mr. Hammond, our Foreign Secretary, said on the floor of the House of Commons the other day, there's no point in talking to Mr. Lavrov, 
because we disagree with him on so many issues. My goodness me, the Russians are bound to disagree with us on so many different issues, whether it's the Baltic states or whether it's Syria. They think differently to us. It's a different culture. It's a different mindset. It's a different history. It's a different perspective but they are a permanent member of the UN Security Council and one of the greatest military powers on this planet. And we have to show them the respect that they deserve and we must engage with them. I'm sorry, Senator, if you disagree with that perspective. I, I respect you enormously. <laughs> but part of the democratic process is we must debate these issues because we must protect Poland and ensure that she is safe Going for. I don't want to take up any more time on this subject. I do disagree with you, but okay. people here would like to I, I talk would, to Matthew. I would just like to add so one, I, I one want point to step about, up. about this debate. One, I think, potential, uh, if not a fully mitigating solution, a possible ameliorating solution. Introduce a Second Amendment to Poland, like Switzerland. Get every single household in Poland, especially on the border, especially in the ruralities, with a rifle, and see how many little green men come in. I guess sent out the body back. Yes, yes. Well, I, I should explain why I'm here, because I'm one of the few who doesn't speak Polish. But I would advise you to your great compatriot, uh, JP2, as I call him, <laughs> Saint uh, John Paul II for 25 years. And I'm a, a specialist in international law, I specialize in the law of war. And I remember meeting some Poles, and I said, I understand you don't like the Russians. And they said, oh, you're wrong. No, oh, I'm wrong. I always had the impression you don't really like the Russians. No, 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 you're wrong. We hate them. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I'm being, a, 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 not only Catholic, but Catholicissima. I went to Mass today, and today's Gospel is, blessed are the peacemakers. And I believe, because I've also been involved in the Smolensk incident, and I'm afraid I must criticize the previous government for leaving the whole inquiry to the Russians. I mean, what well, that, that gets get directly into the argument that I was making at Applebaum, the great Russian hawk in historiography as well as in contemporary events. From April 10th to June 10th, and when the plane went down to when the snap election occurred, yeah. she wrote three columns in the Telegraph about how great a Russian citizen, the Russian government was as a global citizen, and country. transparency. They did not want, if there was no direct involvement, I don't know what happened in Smolensk, and that's not my job to report to no, know what they, happened, but they were so happy that it did happen, and they were dancing in the streets because they knew they'd win the election for their and gain power. But the ICAO, the, the International Civil Aviation, whatever, you know, ICAO procedure is very clear that it should have been a joint inquiry, mm -hmm. and they just handed everything over. Because no, it, was, no. it was a boon to them. They sure. were very happy. Sure. The opposition was happy the plane went down, and they were going to take power as a result of that. But I also represent another country, one of the few that have tried to invade Russia under Charles the Twelfth. Just like, once again, the sticky end, he got as far as Moscow, and then everyone froze to death. Right? Now, it, 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 is, uh, it is having been born in Sweden, you grow up with a great big bear. And I agree with our member of parliament here who emphasizes you do not annoy someone of that strength. I appreciate that my mission is to protect Poland. I like Poland, I love Poland more than most Poles. I don't know why I have a Sigismund Vasa as the Golden King, but otherwise I cannot understand, uh, perhaps it is JP2. And Pope Francis sent me not long ago with Cardinal Tuxen to calm down the Polish miners who go on strike because of his uh, inadvertent thing in his encyclical to change the renewable energy like that, which would make everyone lose their jobs. But my, my point here is the one we've got to watch is the European Union because they have a, 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 a migration a invasion in our. Uh, uh, largely Christian country was planned 15 years ago. They've been planning this under what's called a mobility scheme. It's in my book. Oh, it's in the book. Yeah, my book, which has been lift up, like on dance, on television, that it is, uh, it is a secret, it was a secret scheme to do that. And the next scheme is conflict 
mixing with food things near a broad scheme, which has his, we all have to accept, there are some states under his, in his sphere, in Russia's sphere of influence, like Azerbaijan. No, 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 the European Union has another mobility scheme. For, I didn't know Azerbaijanis, or whatever they call, are my neighbors. They live a bit far away, aren't they? And he, they also, the European Union also specialized in the largely Muslim uh, uh, states that they got to now as well. Now, just one last point, if you allow me. Uh, a Swedish website criticizing uh, the aggression of, of women by these migrants was taken down under another EU rule, which they also found uh, about in 2008, that if there's criticism against the migration, we got to attack them on a hate race card. So to defend yourself and say the migrants have behaved offensively attacking and raping women, the rate in Sweden has gone up by 2,000 percent because the streets did almost Only one country in the world that has higher. Where is the anti-communist square? You know, we need to also condemn all the communists which are still there. Okay. So I'm sorry for all right. taking Let that. Me, I, 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 I'll, I'll do the questions. I'll, I'll take no, the, you do the no, answers. No, no. I, what I mean is, I will, select the, I will select the question here. But what I would like to say is, just in a very brief reply to that, is that uh, President Putin is seen in the House of Commons as a sort of pantomime villain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and... Um, you know, a very senior member, somebody's not going to be happy with what I'm going to say here, but a very senior member of the government uh, referred to me the other day as Comrade Kaczynski <laughs> because I had initiated a debate on Anglo Russian relations and he came up to me and he said, uh, How are you, Comrade Kaczynski? Uh, the other issue is, of course, uh, I, do, I would like to state for the record that I have never, nor would I ever, take any money from yeah. the Russian government, which is the other. Uh, uh, thing they like to throw at you if you uh, if raise you do, the Matthew will find you. Yeah. <laughs> they won't even take any money from the Polish government. Because th this is what they throw at you. If you try to remember, in politics, it takes a it takes a little bit of guts to raise things which are non-fashionable. Yeah. Uh, uh, people are like lemmings; yeah. they will go in politics yes. with with the flow, yes. and it's very easy to go with the flow, and it's difficult to challenge and say actually. You know, is this in our interests? Yeah. Is there an alternative? Can we can we discuss this? Can we can we look at alternatives? And it is difficult, and it's it's unfashionable to want to engage with Russia. And people do call you comrade, and they do suggest that you're taking money from them because the universal agreed perspective is that these are bad people with bad motives. Yeah. But the reality is, they are there. Yeah. And we, they are our neighbours, and we've got to somehow resolve this situation because I don't want tensions rising and, uh, and difficulties arising from them. Right. But this isn't about Russia, this is about well, engaging with Mr. Well, well, one, one thing that, that you, know, you, you do want to recognise they're there and dedicate yourself to a realpolitik strategy, but you don't want to undermine their bad motives because there are bad motives. You can talk to Boris Nemtsov's family or the families of the members of Pussy Riot. I mean, these are not, this is not a society that you can say, uh, well, they have a different value system, but if that value system encroaches upon the freedom of their citizens and then other citizens, yes. Yes, that's a mentality let, that is very dangerous. Let me answer. Let Questions me, no. about Poland, please. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. But, but, but just before that, can I just say, when we were in Moscow, one of the business people said to me, isn't it ironic how we're bending over backwards to accommodate the Chinese? <laughs> 